Hello, I am so happy to welcome you to this episode of Leadership in Aviation podcast. And I have someone who's become a dear friend to me on the podcast today. Mark Schultz is the founder of Digital Aircraft. And we met on Facebook and then on LinkedIn. And now here we are in a podcast. Mark, I am so delighted to capture your nuggets of wisdom for leadership in aviation. Welcome to the show. Yeah, Renee, thank you so much for uh, inviting me to come and just have this conversation with you. You know, I'm really pleased to be here. And yeah, I, it, we did meet in a couple of different ways. And uh, I think one of them, we we uh, we really engaged for the first time when I did a, a virtual you know, conference is what I did. And you helped me, you jumped in and said, I'll help you out. And that was great. So I think that was, you know, that was the about three or four years ago, probably. Mark, you've done so many things to help out in this industry. You recently did a huge series on blockchain in aviation, digging in and finding out what the future of digital transformation looks like in the aviation industry. You found experts from all over the world um, and really found out what they were doing with blockchain from air traffic um, management in busy airports to frequent flyer programs that are moving to NFTs to empty legs on private jets being offered on NFTs to the launch of your very own NFT, which brings me to my question. This is a collaborative project with your family. And I've been in a family business for a long time and, and that's a completely different kind of leadership. Can you talk a little bit about leading your family in business? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Let's let's go there. And then there's some other thoughts I want to throw in from other different directions as we come back, because that's really an important part. Because let me just say this is that interestingly, you know, I met my wife, you know, uh 35 plus years ago working in the office place. All right. We were working, you know, in cubicles nearby each other at McDonnell Douglas in St. Louis. And we were both working on the F-18 project. All right. And so at a very early you know, age, I found myself being near my wife and working, you know, with her, a family member, uh, you know, in work kind of situations. And then I actually left McDonnell Douglas and went to Northwest Airlines. And uh, she left and worked as an engineer there as well. And we found ourselves working for the same person in the same office again at Northwest Airlines. And so, you know, it was during those times that we, we began to try to understand how are we going to work together? So over the years, I continued to develop, you know, those abilities to be able to work together. But Renee, I, I'm at heart a uh, an entrepreneur, right? And and when I have worked in large companies, it's been with an entrepreneurial kind of an approach of like starting new business units inside of larger companies or or helping, you know, product lines launch from an entrepreneurial standpoint. And so it required an, an incredible amount of collaboration and team, you know, work whether it would be a family member or whether it would be, you know, a, a coworker. All right. But the reason I bring up the entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial part of it is because I have started, I don't even remember anymore. I've started maybe 20, 25 businesses over my career. And, um, and many of those businesses become, you know, family, you know, operated kind of businesses where my wife, Susan is involved in doing elements of the business. And, uh, you know, when my kids got old enough, they were mowing grass at a shopping center that we had built, you know, and, and so, so in many different ways, we were bringing the family into the business as it was growing and evolving. All right. And so that brings us to where we are today in that um, uh, I have a, a project, you know, I'm, I told you I'm passionate about aviation and about digital. And um, let me just say that I've been speaking on blockchain in the industry because people are very interested in learning more about it. It's very uh, very, it's very, it's not very well understood um, in the industry. As a matter of fact, I spoke spoke last week at a conference in Miami, and there was maybe 300 people in the room. And from the stage, I asked them, I said, raise your hand if you hold cryptocurrency. Now, I knew that roughly 19 or 20 percent of people in the United States, you know, hold crypto wallets, let alone NFTs are really involved in even exchanging it. There was about six people that raised their hand in that room of like 300, maybe. And so what that told me even further is that the people that understand blockchain technology in aviation is even less than maybe in the broader cryptocurrency market and things like that. So one of the missions that I took myself on was is to begin to help people to understand 
this unique technology. That's one of the things I do. I look at all kinds of different technologies and I help people understand them. And how do we leverage those unique technologies to be successful in our businesses? And I'm not pushing blockchain. I just believe that it's a unique technology that has the ability to be able to help aviation. So I, I, I did a lot of work this summer and I've over the last few years understood non-fungible tokens, NFTs. And I said, how can I use that in my own business to be able to grow my business from my products and services perspective? So I did just that. Um, I, I said, what are my assets? I looked, I said, what's my business problem? My business problem is I want to grow. And what are the products and services I have? Well, I have these products and these services. And I said, what are my assets around me? Okay, well, I have I, I want to I want to incorporate a blockchain project. And I have my wife, who's an expert at social media and marketing, and she's actually worked for one of the former presidential, you know, campaign candidates. And so she was involved at that kind of a level. I have a daughter who works as a professional animator at, uh, at a major animation studio in California. So I have an artist in the family. And I have a son who's in his late 20s, who's uh, passionate about cryptocurrency and about uh, blockchain. And I said, I have the assets that I need in my own family. I, I need to be using those, okay? Now, so do we have everything we need? No, I hire out contractors. I go, out, I go overseas and I hire artists and I hire programmers and I hire people locally here in the United States, you know, onshore. And so what we do is again, like I do in everything is I envision where we wanna go. I create a project and I say, how can we work together, you know, to accomplish this? as a team. Now, before we go on is that I'm going to answer your question that you started with. How do you work with your family? Okay. Well, it's a different management style than managing people. I've managed, you know, workers in 7-Elevens that I've owned and I've managed construction companies and I've managed professional engineers and professional trainers and I've managed um, uh, business people and I've managed executives, you know, all the way across the entire, you know, spectrum. And I've managed my family. Now, I loosely say I manage my family. Many times my family manages me, Renee, okay? And so managing of a family unit is more of what's the project that we have to accomplish and what are the output outcomes and goals and objectives that we wanna achieve and how can we collaborate together to be able to achieve those you know, harmoniously? And you know, my family members and I, we work quite well together. And as we continue to you know, be kind to one another and help each other understand and explain it for the 15th time. You know, we, we work together to achieve outcomes and goals and objectives. And that's very different than, um, than managing, you know, maybe a, a skilled worker at a construction site. Okay. You know, most of the time they're looking for direction. They go, what should I do today? I want you to do this, 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 and this. All right. Not always, but sometimes they are. And in a family, we're saying, what's the project and how do we work together to achieve a successful outcome? What do you think? Let's do this. Let's let's work on the art. Let's work on the, the blockchain programming. You know, let's work on the coding that we need. And so we collaborate and we work together to achieve outcomes, goals, and objectives. But I, I'm going to finish that, Renee, by saying that when I when I worked in the construction industry, one of my partners who was at an exec, we were at executive level, one of my partners came to me and he said, Mark, you're different. And I said, well, how's that? And he says, well, you know, you manage people to their maximum potential when most people manage people to a minimum standard, all right? And so that's really the way I think is, is that how do I manage people to their maximum potential instead of telling them, this is what I want you to do because this is the minimum that we need to do to get things done. And, and I believe that that's one of the keys to my real success is by working with people to manage them to their maximum potential is what it really is. Oh my gosh, Mark, that's amazing. So as you were talking, I was thinking back, like you're still using those two keys that you learned from your auto shop teacher in high school, right? The, the communication skills and taking responsibility for digging into something deeper, which you're doing with digital transformation in aviation. But over the years, just like we spoke about at the beginning of the podcast, over the years, you grew and you took, you developed additional skills. One is collaboration and looking at what assets you have and being able to pull those in and work them together to reach a bigger vision. And then the second thing is managing people to their maximum potential. And I'm just thinking about in my life, when people saw potential in me, even that I didn't see in myself, I performed formed and grew and stretched myself 
to please or to rise up to that potential that they saw in me that I didn't see in myself like crazy. So I agree with you that that's one of the biggest keys of your success.